think you heard me after the other night, you know, and a lot of people were saying, oh, why is he saying that and that? But I truly and firmly believe that the problem with Oakland in the last week, week and a half has been me. And uh, we went back to our roots and where we were the first day of practice and started over. And I'm very pleased with the results. That doesn't mean we're there, but I think we're refocused and back to uh, having the plan that would make our team the best it can be. And we got away from that plan, and that's my fault. So I'll go ahead and ask those guys questions, and then I'll answer anything you got. Questions for Kay Felder and Jalen Hayes? Okay, we missed you tonight. I'm glad you're back. Um, what um, can you elaborate what you talked about? What, what, what needed starting over? What, what needed fixing? What do you think? What do you think happened over the last two days? We just had some. Uh, I would say it's personal problems within ourselves that we need to get out and talk about. And you know, as a team and as a leader, me being myself, bring everybody together. Not just had individual conversations with everybody to see where their heads was at. And I had those conversations just so we can move forward. And, you know, I would come to the Coach Campy or I talked to Wash a lot over these last two days about the team and what was going on. And it was just another stepping stone that we took today to going forward. Uh, did it feel good just to be able to get out, you know, after, you know, a quick turnaround, be able to get back on the court and get a win after, after the Friday's performance? Oh, definitely. It was. Um, we came out, we executed. Not to the T, but we did what we were supposed to do, and this win, hopefully it starts something great for us. Now we can start our win streak and be ready for Saturday. What do you think the key is going to be with five days in between your next game? Kind of, like, it can't be said to be focused. And what do you think is going to be the key this week? Preparation, you know, how you take care of your body. You, know, uh, you have a couple of days in between the game, so, you know, you just have to stay focused, stay committed to the process, and... Like I said, take care of your body. Jalen, what about Kay as a leader? You know, you talking about him pulling everybody aside, having conversations. Yeah. You know, what does that say about Kay, you know, in terms of leadership? Well, that's just another sign to show how good of a leader he is. Um, he's really stepped into that role this year. And, I mean, all the guys are behind him 100%, so he's doing a great job leading us. <clears throat> but you personally, your presence uh, in the post in this basketball game as of yeah. late, you know, the, the Georgia game, you kind of came out for the season and, you know, you played well offensively since then. Yeah, just being aggressive, man. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's all it is, just being aggressive. Whenever I catch the ball in the post and they're not doubling down, um, I'm just trying to get to the rim and finish. As Camp always tells you in practice, Jalen, go dunk the ball. Is that, <laughs> so is that something you're cognizant? Because you seem to be, you know, taking it to that more. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm listening to what he tells me to do, so yeah. He says it a little differently, though. Then. <laughs> <laughs> this one that's just for both players. You have almost a whole week off before you play your next game. And I know the, the, the first part of the season hasn't been what you wanted, but how do you want to be different when we see you play again? And what do you want to work on in this week off? Um, during this week off, we're really going to, you know, work on Detroit. We're going to work on, you know, their personnel. We're going to work on just their, our game plan against them. So this week we're going to get to practice. We're going to know their tendencies. We're going to, you know what I mean? So we're just going to focus on Detroit and focus on ourselves as far as, like Cam said, rebuilding ourselves. It's been great. Week. So this week is definitely, I'd say it's a big week for us. You know, it's Detroit is supposed to be a rivalry. But, I mean, if we win every time, then it won't be. Then uh, I'd say just focusing on make sure your body is good for that game. You know, that's a big game. Especially for Cappy, he's going to be all over us. Yeah, that's the main thing. Finding out personnel, what, they, what their defense tendencies are. That's it. Once upon a time when we talked to you guys, you guys talked about great. Do you still feel that's there, that's reachable? And if it is, how do you get there? Definitely. Greatness is still in the picture. You know, I mean, we're just taking it one day at a time, one game at a time. Um, Still a long season to go, man. We, we we hit a couple bumps in the road, but it's, it's still definitely a chance for us to be great. You guys brought, you guys brought the pressure tonight again. You brought that back. You guys were using that earlier on in the season and created a lot of turnover struggles for them. Can you talk about that? Just working on it. Uh, you know, that's what our, this team can do. We can get up 
into deep into the offense and cause turnovers, cause havoc on defense, and we need to get back to that. I love playing that way, playing 94 for you. I don't mind taking the guy baseline to baseline, and, and I know for sure my teammates don't. And we just have to get back to that. Any more questions for the Flyers? Bye, guys. Opening up to Coach Campy. Coach Percy didn't get off the bench in the first half, and then he comes out and he looks good. He scored you know, nine in the nine in the second half. Talk about that. I don't care about the scoring. It's about how he played and the physicality that he played with. He, he got a rebound. He took away from Jalen. Uh, he almost broke Jalen's arm. Um, you know, uh, I think we've proven it that we have potential to be a good team. I think we've shown that over the 17 games that we've played. We've also proven that we can lose our way. Um, if, if he can play at the level of intensity and physicality that Percy played with in the second half tonight, we've got a chance to, as Terry said, to, to achieve greatness with this team. I, I believe that. Um, you know, the, it isn't about how many points he scores or how many rebounds. It's about being that presence. That There aren't a lot of players in the Horizon League that look like Percy Gibson. There aren't a lot of players in the country that look like him and can move like him. Um, so I need, as a coach, to figure out how to best use him. Uh, not use him, <coughs> but get to motivate him, to get him to play at peak performance. That's a coach's job. And uh, it's been a struggle for me to learn that. And I tried something tonight. I don't know, you know, it worked tonight, but it, you know, we were playing an RPI team of three something. So, you know, this, this, but that's who we were playing tonight, and we had to start somewhere. And we started tonight and played a really good basketball game, and I thought Percy played very well. I also think that Brad Brechting and Xavier played fabulous for us, and maybe that had something to do with Percy playing well, too. Coach, I know you've been trying to reach Percy, and I was just wondering, as a personality or person, what what is he and, and, and what would have been the challenge, I guess, for you to try to motivate him? Percy's the brother that you would want to have. That's who he is. He's, he's, he's the guy that you'd want to be your brother because he's a happy-go-lucky, always a joke, always smiling, just goes about every day, doesn't have a care in life. And, and as a family member, as a brother, man, you, you would love him, but would you want to go to war with him? And, and that's what we got to do on these nights that people pay money to come watch you play and you have all these dreams and hopes. And he's a very talented young man who just, he's just got to understand what he's got left in this. If, if, if basketball is a true love of, him, of his and he really wants to achieve and accomplish on the basketball court, he's got a handful of games left and he needs to perform like he did tonight um, every time out on the court. He can't take plays off, days off, those types of things. And, and again, as his coach, I've got to learn, you know, I only get him one year. You know, it's, and it's why I normally don't take junior college kids. You know, I do take a lot of transfers because you have it set out here. But he's the first, you know, when taking a kid that's only going to play one year, we usually don't do that. But because of his position and, and that, we took him. But it's one of the reasons that if you look at the history of our program, I don't usually take a year or two-year players. So take transfers. But... You know, it's just because our system's very difficult to learn, and, and I have to learn how to coach kids. And I coach every one of them differently. Every single one of those kids get coached differently. The other thing is, we know you guys as a perimeter team and guards and everything, but you do have some young, big guys, and you have Percy and everything. What is the work to your team? What, what, do, what, what must they provide for you for the rest of the season for you to be successful? Well, I think... One of the things that our fan base and our people have forgotten, and it's probably because I've came out and said how good, how talented the team is. You know, when, when the head coach comes out and says this is who's coached for a thousand years, 
says 1 to 11, it's the most talented team he's ever had. I didn't say it's the best team I ever had. I said from 1 to 11, it's the most talented team I've ever had. When a coach says that, there's these great expectations. What people don't, we started tonight a freshman, two sophomores, and two juniors. You know, I mean, this, because Percy didn't start, I mean, this is still a young team when it comes to, this This is a different look at team than last year. These are different guys. I mean, you wanted to talk to them about the loss to UIC last year in the tournament, but it was Nick, Jalen, Kay, Sharon didn't lose to them in the tournament last year. Martez didn't. Percy didn't. Brad Brechtin didn't. Xavier didn't. Javen Cumberland didn't lose to them. So I couldn't even go there with that. You know, it, it is a new team. That's And the truth of the matter, Terry, is we lost our way. And it's, and it's my fault that we lost our way. And what does that mean? If you look at how we played, we went to Spain. We were going to press, and we were going to pound the ball inside and shoot threes on kickouts. And we went to Spain, and we scored 101 a game. And that started the erosion of what we were going to be because as the coach, I'm like, well, we got to keep pushing tempo. And then we play the number one team in the country. We scored 50 points in the first half. And so this erosion of what we were going to do kept taking place until Sharon against Valpo came down on maybe back-to-back -back possessions early in the first half and made contested threes off no, no shot, no passes, one pass. And the place is going nuts. And I turned and looked at Sadi, and I said, we're in real trouble. And that's when it finally dawned on me that we have completely lost our way. We're just out there trying to outscore people. And it's okay to, you know, give up an easy basket, even though we can defend. And our numbers show that we're playing great defense. Our numbers are unbelievable. We are, I think the best field goal defensive team I've ever had in my 40, 30 years is like 44, 43%. We're right at 40. I mean, that's four percentage points is a huge number. Our three, we're giving up 33, 32 from the three. Those numbers are fantastic. Our, our points per possession are fantastic. But what's happening is we're losing how much we care about playing defense. And it's eroding. And it kept eroding. And it eroded. And it slapped us right in the face against Youngstown. We scored 98 and lost. That should never happen in your home. It can happen on the road when you play like we do, but it should never happen here. And then we got spanked by Valpo. And it was all because... We lost our way. I don't know if I'm making sense or not. Maybe I'm the only one that can understand what I'm trying to say. Today we got back and we didn't run. We walked the ball up the floor and we scored 86 points. We had way less possessions and we had scored 86 points because we were efficient and we played from the basket out today. And if we're going to be great, that's how we have to play. During a season, erosion is, is normal. Your principles defensively erode. You change your game plan based on players and that. And what's very seldom does a team erode offensively, and that's what we did, is we eroded offensively. And now we've got to get back, and that's the coach's fault. I don't know if anybody understood what I just said. I talked for a long time. I know that.